And we are back with some more Hartford Whalers franchise mode in FHM 8. And in this one, we are going to go into the offseason of year number five, where we have just dropped the Stanley Cup Finals in a brutal six-game series. After going 57, 18, and 5 during the regular season, we came up just short in the playoffs, and that really... <laughs> That hurts. But you know what? With talent like Paul Coffey and Yari Curry on board, not to mention several other guys, Dave Anderchuk, he's coming into his own four-star potential now. Great, great in the playoffs. Three-star ability. Bernie Nichols had a solid season. He was nearly point per game. 78 points in 79 games played. So we're, we're getting a much, much better. You have Mike Vernon coming up. He had his first full season this year. 47 games played. 888 save percentage. I know it's not great. Uh, even for this time period, it's below average at best. But... As long as he can keep progressing, then this team has quite a bright future ahead of them. And real quick, let's check the playoff stats. I don't know if we did that in the last one. <laughs> in, in fact, I'm pretty sure we didn't due to the very unfortunate ending that the Stanley Cup Finals had. So Dave Anderchuk with 30 points in 19 games played. Wow. 23 for Stasny, 22 for Curry, 21 for Kissio and Stasny, 20 for Nichols in 16 games, 13 for Pedersen, 11 for Nyland, 10 for Poulon and Mark Howe. 9 for Roberts and Rochefort, 8 for Stasny, Beers and Sullivan, 7 for Coffey, so that's a bit surprising, only 7 in 19 games for Paul Coffey, especially considering his regular season numbers that, yeah, that's definitely a bit of a underwhelming performance for him. Newfeld with 5, Samuelson with 4, 1 for Levo and Larmer, and in goal, Vernon with the 894 save percentage and Garrett with the 842 <laughs> In four games played, so that is yikes. I don't know what games that he went in for. It was the games against Philly. Yikes. <laughs> if you could argue, if Vernon had played those games, we might have actually won those games. Although it looks like he might have come in for relief during that game on the 21st. Yeah, he only played 46 56. But those other two games, you could argue that if, if Mr. Vernon was in there for those two games, we might have actually had a chance. We might have actually won. I don't know what brought about that coaching decision by Mr. Jack Ferreira, but uh, definitely would have preferred he stuck with Vernon for those last two games there. Actually, let's take a look at the schedule. Yeah, I mean, he had one bad game, did Mike Vernon. I don't think that's enough to, you know, bench him, especially considering his performance from the previous series against not only Montreal, but against Quebec as well. LA was fine, that was a bit shaky, but still, he, he had been on fire since then, and they had one bad game with Philly, and then the coach just immediately switches to Garrett. I, I don't agree with that. That's not a good move. So definitely a very disappointing way to end the playoffs there. Anyway, it is June 14th, meaning we have the NHL awards ceremony. So the Ted Lindsay and the Art Ross go to Wayne Gretzky. He had 164 points this year, 70 goals, 94 assists. Maurice Richard goes to Dino Cicerelli with 86 goals. Lady Bing goes to Yari Curry of your Hartford Whalers. The Bill Masterson goes to Bob Bourne of the Islanders. The Mark Messier Leadership Award goes to Doug Jarvis of the Montreal Canadiens. And the Jennings goes to Pete Peters of Philly. The heart between Gretzky, Bossy, and Curry. Come on, Curry. Yeah, Gretzky. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> I don't know why, why I was thinking with Curry. And the Conn Smythe goes to Rejo Rutsalainen of Philly. And the Calder between Ellett, Vernon, and Ridley. Come on, Vernon. Yeah, Mike Vernon wins the Calder as a 21-year-old goaltender. Way to go, Mike Vernon. So despite that 888 save percentage, he still somehow got Rookie of the Year. I, I will take it. Good job. Norris between Larry Robinson, Mark Howe, and Bjorn Salming. Come on, Howe. Yeah, Mark Howe wins the Norris Trophy as the Defenseman of the Year. And the Frank J. Selk between Curry, Dugai, and Hunter. Come on, Curry is Dave Hunter. And the Vesna between Save, Peters, and Millen it is Pete Peters of Philly. So the best goalie this year with an 898 save percentage. And Jim of the Year between yours truly, Jake Milford, and Lou Nan. It is Lou Nan. Uh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> Snubbed once again for GM of the Year. I, I seemingly can never win that thing. Jack Adams Award between Harry Neal, Jack Ferreira, and Glenn Sonmar. Come on, Ferreira. Yes, okay. At least Jack Ferreira won Coach of the Year. I'll take it. I will take it. So in terms of individual awards, we got quite a bit this year, actually. We got Mike Vernon winning the Calder. We have uh, Mark Howe winning the Norris. And Jack Ferreira winning the Jack Adams Trophy. And Yari Curry winning the Lady Bing Trophy. 
So four individual awards this year, not bad, but of course I would have preferred uh, the bigger one, the Stanley Cup. All right, we are on June 23rd, which means it's time to sign some rookies. We have some guys with uh, deadlines coming up. If you're ready, not going to sign you. You're <laughs> half star potential. Uh, I mean, yeah, like you can you can see what I mean when I say the draft has been very lackluster in the later rounds so far. Really, so far this GM mode. I don't know if we've ever had too deep of a draft. Uh, Mark Patterson, no. One and a half star potential. I mean, let's take a look at his ratings. Yeah, the offensive category is not bad. Mental ratings are kind of low. Then again, he's Russian, so can I even sign him right now? Let's see. Oh, okay, I can. So can we officially sign Russians then? Does that mean? Submit offer? I guess so. Because I don't think I've been able to up to this point every time I've tried. Claude Vilgrain, one-star potential. Uh, I don't think so. That, that's kind of low in every category there. Like below average, basically everywhere. And he's 21 already, so yeah, I, I don't think so. Megan, no. Villander, I might sign you. You're a one-and-a-half-star ability. Yeah, I'll sign him even if, if it's just for depth. Is there anybody else I want to sign? I think I'll sign Barrasso, honestly, because he's he seems like he's ready for at least the AHL. He's a one-star talent and a three-star potential. He had a pretty decent year in U.S. college this year with an 889 save percentage, and remember, for this time period, that's actually pretty good. Well, I mean, for the NHL, I, I don't know about you know, other leagues, but based on what we've seen, that's pretty good. So I think we'll be signing him. And as far as uncontracted prospects go, I think that is about it for now. And of course, that might change when we get to the draft, but obviously that has not happened yet. And here we go, our 1983-84 season score. We got almost every positive category except manager of the year. And of course, the most important one, win championship, which means we got a total season score of 34 and our total career score is at 96. Excuse me, Wayne Gretzky is a free agent? What? Ray Bork too? H how is... That? Hanlon? What, what, what is free agency this year? What? What? Why now all of a sudden? Like, what? This is, like, did any team bother signing their players? Like, at all? <laughs> like, this seems like the entire league here. Are they just restricted? Yeah, okay, okay. So Ray Bork is restricted. What about Gretzky? Okay, restricted free agent. That's good. I, I, was, I was about to say, what, what the heck is going on here? <laughs> like, does, does every team just do this? Where they just don't sign their best players? Like, similar to how Detroit handled Yari Curry last year? I guess so. It just it seems so strange, like, just seeing all these players being unsigned in free agency. So let's uncheck restricted free agents. <laughs> That's literally everybody. <laughs> so I, there's no good way to filter this, it seems. Signable? I mean, what would happen if I were to approach one of these guys? Would it Like, what's the rules on RFA offer sheets in this time period? Let's say Rules. There are offer sheets, it seems. There are restricted free agents. Okay, but like, what? what's the... Tell me the... <laughs> what do I need to provide in compensation, you know? Like, does that show on here? I'm not seeing anything about offer sheet compensation. I, I guess we just experiment and... So let's just see what happens. Let's just see... What if I offered Gretzky? The Edmonton Oilers own the league rights to Wayne Gretzky. So, like, what happens here? Do I... I guess I just submit it as usual. But, like, I, I don't know what the compensation on this is. Presuming there is compensation at all. Because the, <laughs> the game's not telling me. Like, are all these guys just showing up now because I decided to uncheck contracted but signable? Is that why? <laughs> I guess so. Because, I mean, you got Bossy, you got Prop, Broughton, Hanlon, Gretzky, Bork. I mean, it's just, it seems like it's the entire league here. Is there anyone who doesn't have rights here? Like, is there anyone who's just a straight-up free agent? Seems like every player of quality <laughs> of NHL caliber is still under the control of an NHL team, which makes sense. But still, I don't know why those teams wouldn't have signed them by now. Like, why, why does every team wait until July 1st <laughs> to sign their best players? Definitely something to work on for FHM 9. Yeah, I mean, even some of these one-star players down here have rights with an NHL team. He's even this half-star, Fenton, 24 years of age, rights with the New York Islanders. Are there any free agents this year that don't have NHL rights? Even the worst player on the list has a team. L like, is there any truly unrestricted free agents? Because... If I, if I uncheck restricted free agents, then it literally lists like five players. Yeah, there's literally only five players that are not restricted free agents right now. 
and they're all terrible. So let, let me just, let me see what happens if I decide to offer Wayne Gretzky. I'll, I'll give him like a million. Cause I mean, we can afford it. We have plenty of money remaining. Let's, let's just see what Edmonton responds with and, and how much we're going to end up paying in, in terms of compensation for this. So submit offer sheet. Oh, okay. So only a first and a third, really. I mean, for Gretzky, that's worth it. <laughs> that is more than worth it for Gretzky. I will absolutely do that. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, what about Bork here? What if I were to offer him? I'll give him like 700000 for four years. Oh, it's the same. So I, I would have to offer the same first and the same third. Okay. Not doing that then. I just I want to see what happens with Gretzky. Because if, if we can manage to get Gretzky, then we are basically set here. All right, so with that being done, I think we're going to wait until we see what happens with the Gretzky before we do anything else. So we're going to advance up to the NHL entry draft on the 3rd. I'm assuming it's going to be a week before anything happens with Gretzky. So, I mean, I'm not expecting to get Gretzky here. I, I think Edmonton's going to match, but <laughs> still be, it would be wild if they didn't. So let's get up to the draft here. He says, you've given me quite an offer. I might not sign, but I'd be floored if another club was willing and able to match it. I mean, it's maybe that's a good sign. I don't know. Let's we'll see what happens. And here we go into the NHL entry draft of year number five. And obviously we have something to look forward to. Even if we don't have a good draft, we have <laughs> the potential signing of Wayne Gretzky to look forward to. So let's see who is available in the draft here. Oh my, this is, well, obviously Lemieux. But obviously given that we were the best team in the league this year, we can't see the standings now, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be picking 21st. Yes, indeed, because it does go by regular season standings. And Pittsburgh actually has the first overall pick. So I guess, you know, Mary Lemieux going to Pittsburgh, mimicking real life, That's uh, that makes sense. So I, I don't think there's any way we're getting the first overall pick from Pittsburgh. But, but just out of curiosity, let's see what it would take to possibly get it. I would definitely have to offer our first. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to do this. I just want to see what they would say if I would offered... Oh my, if I, even if I offer Paul Coffey, Yari Curry, Mark Howe, Peter Stasny in a first, they still are nowhere even close to giving up that first overall pick. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I just wanted to see what would happen. And that, that is, yeah, that is a first overall pick of incredible value. And who would they pick but Mario Lemieux? Yeah, there you go. So Mario Lemieux goes to a familiar spot and obviously we're not picking until 21 so I'm not expecting there to be any real good players available at that point at most we'll get a two and a half star player but that's being generous honestly we there probably won't be anything but two stars available left at that point so pick till human yeah I, I imagine so the best player available at this point is Peter Svoboda the two star potential defenseman and of course, Patrick Roy did go second, except this time to the Toronto Maple Leafs instead of the Montreal Canadiens. So let's see who would be worth picking up here. Svoboda is, ooh, he's a while off. Riche might not be bad. He's still a while off too, but you know, he's, that offensive category is promising. I, I won't say it's NHL ready yet. Definitely not, but he could be NHL ready in two, three, maybe four years. Doug Bodger, good positioning. Mikhail Anderson, good defensive read. As a winger, especially. So he's a defensive winger there. No one else really standing out at this point. So I think I'll take Riche here. Yeah, I'll take Riche. Welcome to the Hartford Whalers, Stefan Riche. There's the first round done with. Now the second round here, there's one two-star potential left in Frederick Stillman. Looks like an offensive defenseman based off his defensive category being pretty low. Looks like he never played in the NHL because his real stats are nowhere to be found. For me, it's between these three. Stillman, Cavallini, and Obarak, all defensemen. Obarak's from Italy. Not a good offensive category, but pretty good defensively. Definitely the best defensively out of these three. But obviously isn't going to put up many points. Cavallini, I would say, is the most well-rounded of the three. And then Stillman, best puck handler. And Stillman also has the potential. I think I have to go Cavallini here. He's pretty sound defensively, and he's also pretty good offensively. Uh, if Obrock's still there with our next pick, I'll take him. But uh, Stillman, not looking too impressive overall. Good puck handler, but that is about it. So I think I'll be taking Cavallini here. Welcome to the Hartford Whalers, Paul Cavallini. And on to round number three, there is one, one and a half star potential left. A goalie in Bruce Racine. Uh, not looking great, but I'm sure he's... Probably better than most of our other options left. JJ Danio, I know I butchered that, but uh, nonetheless, looks 
pretty good if these are his actual ratings. Special ability as well as suitcase. This player finds himself getting traded very often. Oh, I see. <laughs> I don't know how that's a special ability, but <laughs> let's let's see his real stats. Okay, so he played for Vancouver, Philly, Montreal for a while there. Looks like his longest stint with any team. St. Louis, Pittsburgh, Anaheim, the Islanders, the Predators, the Coyotes, and the Wild. So I, I don't know how suitcase is a special ability here. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I, it's not like that's his fault necessarily. I, I mean, maybe it is, but that seems like a very strange special ability to have. He finds himself getting traded very often. His current team always seems to underestimate his value. I mean, uh, he's got some... If, if those ratings are accurate, those are pretty good. Especially for an 18-year-old. I mean, he's only got a one-star potential, but is here's the question. Can he prove to be good enough to push that potential up to maybe a two star, two and a half, maybe even three star. I think maybe he could do it. For an 18 year old defenseman, these are some pretty good attributes. I don't know why he's only got a one star potential and a half star ability for that matter. Doesn't seem like it based off this. It might be that mental category dragging him down. But I think the most perplexing thing here is the, <laughs> the suitcase special ability. I've never seen that before. That's <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. The, the the special ability to get traded often. Projected to be picked 38. We're already past that point. I guess he wouldn't be bad. I mean, we don't necessarily need another goalie prospect, especially not one who's, you know, he's, he's only a ha one and a half star potential, so I'm not necessarily interested in him. And there's, you know, we have Barrasso, we have uh, Mike Vernon, and then all the other players above Danio are players I'm not interested in anyway, so may as well just take a chance on Danio here, because I'm, I'm interested to see where he goes. So JJ Danio, ho hold on, <laughs> the, the screen shifted for a second there, I, I want to make sure I'm se selecting the right player. JJ Danio, welcome to the Hartford Whalers. So we're gonna definitely gonna keep an eye on him as this GM mode progresses, just because of the, the really well-rounded attributes for the most part, besides mental ratings. So let's advance to the next round. Let me see if I can find any standouts here like I just did. There's Doug Trapp with a 15 getting open, 14 passing. Looks pretty decent offensively for half-star ability. I'll keep looking. He's definitely the best option so far. Yeah, I think he's the best option here, Doug Trapp. I mean, he's not that impressive, but, you know, for th this point in the draft, I think he's serviceable enough that he may eventually push for a depth spot if he can, you know, push his potential a little bit. So, Doug Trapp, welcome to the Hartford Whalers. And at this point in the later rounds, I believe we're in round number, yeah, we're in round number six now. I think we're just going to simulate the rest of the draft. I can't find anything else that I'm really too interested in. So CPU finished draft. And once again, we could not entirely finish the draft because <laughs> it is 12 rounds long, but it looks like the 11th round did not entirely finish. Yeah, like even our depth chart is saying Danio is already our top defenseman in terms of our unsigned players. Like he's almost right there with Samuelson. Uh, I guess I should re-sign Beers. He's fourth on our depth chart in terms of left wingers. Yeah, I'll re-sign Eddie Beers, just for some depth. Nothing on Gretzky. Yeah, it's July 6th now. Wonder if we're going to find out now. Oh, yeah. Okay, yep, yeah, there it is. Edmonton has re-signed Wayne Gretzky. No surprises there. And Ray Bork has re-signed with Boston. So it's a good thing I didn't get my hopes up there. <laughs> that would have been pretty devastating if I had. Okay, so yeah, teams are starting to... <laughs> <laughs> They're matching offer sheets now. So Messier stays with the Edmonton Oilers as expected. Uh, again, I'm not expecting to get any of these players, but I, I'm just trying, you know, because I think the first and the third is worth it for some of these players, especially our first. Like that's probably going to be a pretty late first if this season was anything to go off of. Right. And as we've seen, late firsts aren't worth much. It, it's literally only like the top 10 picks, maybe even the top five that are worth all that much. There's Glenn Anderson, he's 23. He also belongs to Edmonton. So I'll give him like 900,000 submit offer sheet. Maybe get some Bobby Smith. I, I'm, I'm approaching our phase like crazy. I just want to see what happens. Like if I, if I could get even one of them. I know this isn't exactly orthodox of me, but I figured, hey, they're all here as our phase. I'm willing to give up a first and a third for the, any of these players up here. So may as well just see what happens. And the North Stars will match the offer for Bobby Smith, and the Oilers will match Glenn Anderson. Okay. So couldn't get any of those players, but if we take a look at Edmonton's payroll now, they're up there at 4.4 million. That's got to be the highest payroll in the league by far. Actually, we could just check finances here. Yeah, their first player payroll in the league by far. Like, that's half their budget right there. So sort of, uh, <laughs> sort of forcing Edmonton's hand there. Maybe that'll put a strain on them for the future. There's Schwinard. I, I just want one. Give me one. <laughs> Give me one player from RFA. 
That's all I'm asking. 850,000 for Schwenard. I'll approach Grant Fuhrer as well. All right, yep, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was expected. All these teams are holding on to their players when they're all of a sudden approached with an offer sheet. But you know what? Their fault for not signing their players before July 1st. They, they could have very well signed those players in, in advance and nothing. So, of course, I'm, I'm going to go after them if they're available. Call it dirty if you want, but... Hey, uh, you know, I'm just trying to get make my team better with what's available to me. Not my fault the computers didn't resend their players. But in seriousness, no, that is uh, that is definitely something <laughs> they need to work on for FHM nine for the computers resigning their star players in time because like that that's just way too many players going to free agency there. Even if they were RFA's, like it's obviously it's clear that you can force the other team's hand pretty easily just by approaching them, even if you don't sign that player. I mean, it's understandable for a team in the modern day NHL, like 2022, for a star player to go to free agency because, you know, teams have salary cap issues or budget restraints. But here, there's no salary cap. And all the teams that released their free agents had more than enough budget room. So I'm, I'm not understanding why those teams aren't signing their best player. Like Wayne Gretzky, Ray Bork, all those players going to uh, restricted free agency is just, it's a little baffling to me. I'm just curious as to why they were there in the first place. Like, And Yari Curry last year, who obviously we traded for, and I didn't realize that Detroit had probably already approached him with an offer, but he just hadn't been signed yet. But like, I, that's the kind of player you would expect to already be signed, you know? So I, I, I thought maybe Curry just didn't want to sign with Detroit. But clearly that appears to be a very, very common <laughs> pattern amongst the computer teams here in historical GM modes. Okay, what the heck is going on with Curry's contract here? He's currently making zero dollars one year on his contract and he apparently has an extension that I never gave him. Let's see, what if I, yeah, he's got zero dollars on his, yeah, I, I have no idea what's go what the heck is going on with Yari Curry here, but it looks like he might he might be glitched. Cause this happened when I traded for him too, where he, he literally had zero dollars on his salary on a one-year contract and had a one-year extension that I never gave him and he's has it yet again and I literally never approached him for a uh, contract extension so I I have no idea what this is about this is definitely some sort of glitch I guess I'll just edit his contract here give him 200,000 I suppose let's say if I give him two years here will it fix the contract extension or is this like will, will that just push back the contract extension is what I'm wondering let's just see what happens if I Give him a contract like this. So it gives him a salary for this year and next, but the renewed contract is still there for next year with zero dollar. That, that some some weirds going on with Yari Curry. <laughs> he, I think he might be. He might have caused a glitch in the matrix after we traded for him because it like I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> All right, you know what? I'll give him four hundred thousand. I would say that's a reasonable salary for Yari Curry, just given what he did this year and what he's bound to do in the future like that's that seems to be on par with most of the league here but besides obviously as we go back to Edmonton Gretzky and Messier who I basically forced the hand of <laughs> Edmonton into signing into that high of a price but uh yeah that that seems to be about right for Yari Curry looks like Vancouver has Hanlon signed for 435,000 so yeah I would say that's about right for Curry making a lot more than coffee so coffee's certainly do for a raise once his contract expires, but I'm really uh, curious as to what's going on with the Yari Curry's contract there. Anyway, I think that'll be about it for this one, and in the next one, we will get to, I believe, the start of year number six with your Hartford Whalers, and we'll see if we can do just a little bit better than we did last year and win the Stanley Cup instead of losing in the finals. See you guys then.